Hey, do you need help on AMP1? I got your back. I taught it for over a decade. I can help you. I'll go over the important parts and quiz you along the way. Let's get started. This is number one, introduction. Anatomy is the study of the structure of body parts and their relationships to one another. We have gross anatomy, which is macroscopic, things you can see with your eye, like this dude. There's regional by organ system, or even the surface anatomy. We have microscopic anatomy, which requires a microscope, can't see it with your eyes, and cytology, which is the study of cells, and histology, the study of tissues, which are just a collection of cells. The levels of structural organization go from smallest to largest. We're going to start with chemical. Atoms will form into molecules. Next level is cellular. The cells are created by those molecules. Next level is tissue. This consists of similar types of cells working together. Then we have organ, which is made up of different types of tissues. An organ system, which are a collection of organs working together. And then we have our organism. Aww. It's time for a focus quiz. Put the following terms in order from smallest to largest. Press pause now so you don't see the solution. If you didn't get them all right, go back and review that section. We have special branches of anatomy. Pathology is the study of structural changes caused by disease. Radiographic. Internal structures are visualized by scanning procedures, such as x-rays, MRIs, and CT scans. Molecular is the study of anatomical structures at the subcellular level. Now we've reached the most exciting part, physiology. If you're wondering, that's what my PhD is in. It is the normal function of an organism and all of its parts. So let's take each organ system and give you a brief overview. We'll have specific tutorials on each of the systems later. Integumentary system is the external body covering composed of skin, sweat glands, oil glands, hair, and nails. The function is to protect deep tissues from injury and synthesize vitamin D from a cholesterol precursor. Skeletal system is comprised of bone, cartilage, and ligaments. The function is to protect and support body organs. It will provide the framework for the body, site for blood cell formation, and storage of minerals. Muscular system is comprised of muscles and tendons. The function is for locomotion, posture, and will produce heat from contractions. Nervous system is composed of the brain, spinal column, and nerves. It functions for fast-acting control that responds to stimuli with messages to effectors, such as muscles and glands. Cardiovascular system is comprised of the heart and blood vessels. The heart will pump blood and the vessels transport the blood around the body. Lymphatic system is composed of red bone marrow, the thymus, spleen, lymph nodes, and vessels. It functions for fluid return, disposes of debris, and houses white blood cells. Respiratory system is composed of the nasal cavity, pharynx, trachea, bronchi, and lungs. It functions for gas exchange. Digestive system is composed of the oral cavity, esophagus, stomach, intestines, rectum, anus, the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. It functions for food catabolism, which is a breakdown, as opposed to anabolism, which is building. Urinary system is comprised of kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and the urethra. It eliminates nitrogenous waste from the body, regulates water, electrolytes, and pH balance of the blood. Reproductive system. The male reproductive system is comprised of the prostate gland, penis, testes, scrotum, ductus deferens, and will function to produce offspring. The testes produce sperm and male sex hormones. The ductin glands will deliver the sperm to the female reproductive tract. The female reproductive system is comprised of the mammary glands, ovaries, uterine tubes, uterus, and vagina. It functions to produce offspring. The ovaries will produce eggs and female sex hormones. The remaining structures are sites for fertilization and developing the fetus. The mammary glands will produce the milk to nourish the newborn. Endocrine system. The endocrine system is a messenger system that uses feedback loops, mostly negative, and it will release hormones into the circulatory system from internal glands. We call them endocrine glands. And these will regulate distant target tissues. 
and it's under control by the hypothalamus of the brain. So the command center, which is the nervous system, works very closely with the endocrine system to control everything in the body. The anatomy of the endocrine system includes the hypothalamus, pineal gland, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, thymus gland, adrenal gland, pancreas, and ovaries, testes. It's time for a focus quiz. Match the following. Press pause now so you don't see the solution. Alright, here's the solution. I hope you nailed it. I want to draw a very simplified diagram of the body as a rectangle. The borders will be the integumentary system, and let's make four openings to the outside. I'll just hit the major functions. Let's start with the heart. I'll draw the circulatory system as a simple continuous loop. Blood flows in this direction towards the heart. Here are the lungs that will provide a place to exchange gases with the circulatory system. It will give oxygen and pick up carbon dioxide as waste. We breathe in oxygen and exhale CO2 through the lungs. Out here is the interstitial fluid, which is the fluid outside of the cells. The body is largely water and it will have hormones, nutrients, gases, all balanced within this fluid, both inside and outside of the cells or intracellular and extracellular. Speaking of nutrients, let's start the digestive system here. It's basically a long tube from the mouth to the anus. Here, we'll give the circulatory system some nutrients that are broken down via catabolism into small enough molecules to pass. At the anus, we'll excrete the unabsorbed matter as waste. Howdy ho, cowboys! One last thing I want to add here is the urinary system. It's going to filter the blood and excrete nitrogen-containing metabolic waste products via the urine. These are the basic survival needs for a human. Nutrients are needed for energy and cell building. Oxygen is necessary for metabolic reactions. Water is going to provide the necessary environment for chemical reactions. We must have a normal body temperature. This is necessary for chemical reactions to occur at life-sustaining rates. We must have a stable atmospheric pressure. This is required for proper breathing and gas exchange in the lungs. The body is in a dynamic state of equilibrium. Chemical, thermal, and neural factors will interact to maintain this homeostasis. Homeostasis is maintaining a relatively stable internal environment. How do we maintain homeostasis? Well, our control mechanisms are receptors that will detect and respond to changes in the environment or stimuli. Then we have a control center that will determine if this set point at which the variable is maintained is on point. Then the control center can send a message to an effector to respond to the stimuli if it determines it's needed. Do not forget this order. We have a stimulus that will be detected by a receptor. The signal will travel along an afferent pathway to the control center. The message is sent via the efferent pathway to the effector. So E is after A and matches with the effector, so you won't forget that now. The effector will feed back to influence the magnitude of the stimulus and return the variable such as body temperature to homeostasis. Feedback loops are how we maintain homeostasis. Negative feedback loops are the more popular one. The output will shut off the original stimuli. Let me give you a non-biological example of the regulation of room temperature. So our thermometer has a set point that we have set. It's the receptor or sensor. It will send the message to the control center, which is our thermostat. If the ambient temperature gets higher than the set point, the control center will turn off the heater, which is the effector in this example. The response is that the temperature will drop and it also can go in reverse where the thermometer will detect the temperatures under the set point. The control center or the thermostat turns on the heater and gets the temperature back to the set point. So negative feedback is more popular, but we also have positive feedback loops. In these mechanisms, the output will enhance or exaggerate the original stimuli. So for blood clotting, the blood vessel receives an injury. Ouch. This will signal the feedback loop. Clotting occurs as platelets that adhere to the site and release chemicals, which will in turn attract more platelets. The clot will grow, this is called the clotting cascade, and the feedback will end after the clot seals the injury. And the other examples were childbirth and lactation. 
It's time for the final test. Did you comprehend the words that came out Dr. Bond's mouth? Let's see. Pick the most appropriate answer for each question. You've done this before. Press pause now so you don't see the solution. Alright, here's the solution. I hope you nailed it. Okay, that's all we have for this tutorial. The next one will be on atoms. We'll have to go over a little bit of the basics before we can actually understand the rest of it. So I'm sorry, it's gonna be a little boring. And follow Dr. Bond here on YouTube or Closet Gnomes will sew your clothes tighter each night. It's not my fault. It just happens.